Hi guys, welcome to your six pack tutorial. This is Big Data Guy and in this tutorial what we are going to learn about is how to perform join in Spark using different techniques. We are also going to learn about how to perform SQL queries on Spark data frame. So let's get started. So in previous tutorial, we saw that how to calculate week high and week low, month high and month low and year high and year low for the open price on various stock tickers. But those are separate data frames. Now, if you want to combine that with the original data frame, which is the cleaned stock data frame, how do we do that? So to, in order to do that, we need to write join operation. So let's go ahead and perform a simple join operation. So first thing that we are going to do is that we can say that historic stocks is equal to our cleaned stocks, right? So that's our data frame name, the cleaned stocks. And we want to merge it with yearly data frame. So what we are going to do is we are just going to say that let's join this to data frame. And the way that we are going to perform join operation is that we are basically going to say that we want to join on yearly and the column that we want to join on. So the way that we are going to perform a join operation is using condition. So the first condition is that we want to go ahead and use clean stocks dot ticker equal equals to yearly dot ticker. And what we want is clean stocks dot year equal equals to yearly dot here right and we want to do an inner join right so let's go ahead and perform this operation i have misspelled yearly data frame over here so i'm going to fix it and we should be good to go right uh, by the way actually i should not have performed show because now the historic stock will not have anything stored inside of it right so i can show you for example, what do I mean? So I can go and say, um, you know, print historic stocks, type of historic stock. And then it's going to be none, right? Because we have used a show and show does not return anything, right? So if you want to store it as a data frame, then we should not use show operation. But you get the point. So what we have gotten is we have gotten every uh, column together. We have yearly high and yearly low. But coincidentally, what you have also gotten is you have gotten ticker and year and ticker and year these two are duplicate column and we would like to remove them right so what we need to do is we we can do one of the two things either we can just use a chain operation or we can go ahead and say that drop one of the year column using the drop right so what we are going to do is we are just going to go ahead and um, copy this operation again right and i'm going to say okay go ahead and actually join but this time what i want you to do is i want you to drop two things i want to I want you to drop yearly dot um year column and i also want you to drop yearly dot ticker column so that way we only get oh this should be actually drop right so that way you only get uh one yearly and ticker column in a data frame and we don't have any duplicated columns in the data frame right so what we are going to do is we're going to just copy this and store it as a historic um stock price right historic stocks is equal to this and i can do the same thing for again uh, weekly and uh, monthly uh, data frame as well right so let's go ahead and quickly do that. So we are going to say historic, oops. So you're going to say historic stocks dot show. And we want to join it with weekly stock price. So in this case, uh, we have weekly. And by the way, the weekly spread is not going to show up because you're not assigned it to a new data frame. This is just a in place cal uh, calculation. So the weekly data frame only contains these columns, right? 
So we want to have a joint operation on three conditions, so ticker, year, and week, and that's what you're going to use. So we are, uh, we are going to join this on uh, weekly data frame. And what I can do is I can actually write conditions uh, over here uh, before actually going ahead and you know performing um, a join. Right? And this is going to work the same way. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this conditions, right? And then I'm going to actually go ahead and paste it over here. And then I'm going to do one more and because we are going to do one more, um, you know, condition. So because we are going to do a uh, join on the historic stock, so this is going to be historic stock dot ticker is equal to weekly stock dot ticker, and weekly stock dot year. And then at the same time, we also want is uh, weekly historic stock dot week, which is this column, and um, historic uh, weekly dot week, right? So that's what you're going to use. And what you're going to say is that we're going to say conditions over here, right? So these are the three conditions that we want to have. And the join operation is going to be inner and we are going to show, right? So when we do that, it should actually work. So there we go. It's actually worked and we have gotten a duplicate column. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to use a drop column. And we are going to say that we want to drop weekly dot year. We want to drop weekly dot picker. And then we want to drop weekly dot uh, week, right? And we want to store it as historic um, stocks, right? Right, and then I can go ahead and uh, say historic stocks dot show. So I'm just going to copy this. That way we don't actually get spelling mistake. And as you can see that we have gotten weekly high and weekly low over here uh, immediately, and it's good to go, right? Now, what we are going to do is I'm going to go ahead and again do a join operation using yet different technique. And if you prefer this, you could use this as well. And in this case, um, the join operation is not going to return a duplicate column like it does in the other cases if you use conditions um, and um, you know the other way like if you if you use inline conditions as well, right? So the last way that you could perform stock using uh, sorry you could perform join uh, using spark is you just write historic stocks dot join so this time we want to join on a monthly data uh, data frame, right? So let's go ahead and copy the monthly so that way we don't get the uh, spelling mistakes, right? And you can just specify a list of columns that you want to use because there's a common column names between both the data frame, right? So you can just say that monthly, I want to do ticker, I want to do year, and I want to do month, right? And then uh, just show me. And then when you use the show, it's going to go and calculate. You see the, the operation executor when we actually wrote the show, right? So this is how the Spark is lazily evaluated. But anyway, so you can see over here, monthly high and monthly low has showed up and we don't have any duplicates such as sticker week um, and then month and so on, right? So we only have like once a month. So let's go ahead and store this back into historic stocks, right? And that way we are actually good to go. And what I want is I want to go ahead and uh, say historic stock dot columns. And these are the list of columns that we have, right? So when you do that, this is the list of columns that we have, and we want to retain only a few of those columns, right? So you want to say final stocks data is equal to historic stocks of um, dot select, right? Because we want to select some of the columns, right? And the list of columns that we want to select from here and in particular order, right? So we want to select a uh, ticker, definitely. Um, and then uh, what we want to select is after that uh, year, month, and then we want to select the um, day, right? And then we want to select week. And after that, we want to go ahead and select us the things such as uh, volume, open, low, high, and close. Right, and then finally, you want to go ahead and select things like yearly low, yearly high, uh, monthly low, monthly high, and uh, weekly low and weekly high. Right, so we're just going to select this ones, 
and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and hit backspace to just get everything into one singular line. So what we in short have when we do this is we have a very clean version of data frame and interestingly uh, there are actually two tickers, right? Um, and um, it's an ambiguous column. So somewhere you forgot to drop ticker. So we'll need to go and figure out where exactly did we forgot to uh, drop ticker and you know go from there, right? So for example, in this case, uh, after this is done, we have a ticker. And then uh, in historic stock, again, uh, after this, I think we are not going to have ticker after this. So let me actually re-execute this a little bit. So I'm going to go and fix the error, right? So I'm going to go and execute this and let's look at what do we get for historic stocks. Do we have a duplicate column? So, so far we don't have any duplicate column and then in this one, we are also dropping the weekly dot ticker. So we should not have duplicate columns either in this case either, right? So we're gonna go ahead and perform this again. And let's go ahead and look at historic stocks. What does it contain? So we still, uh, so in this case, the ticker column is not being deleted uh, from the weekly data frame so what we need to do is we need to figure out let's go ahead and drop this column actually and then we're going to go ahead and see if we can go ahead and clean this Okay, so we only have one ticker column over here when we executed it. So I'm just going to drop the historic ticker over here and then I can go ahead and again execute this and uh, execute this and it, it would work perfectly fine. So I can go and show you the final stock price right over here. And it's a very clean process data frame in the correct order, right? So it's a neat and clean data frame. So anyway, let's say you want to perform some sort of SQL operation on this final stock. How do we do that? I want to write a SQL query. So in order to do that, what we can do is we can go ahead and uh, use something called register as temp table, right? So we are going to go ahead and say uh, final stocks dot create. Uh, I think is it create or uh, is it register? I think it's register. So we're going to say register as uh, register temp table and then uh, I'm going to call this uh, stock data right and once I register it you see it's 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 been registered and in future um, you know uh, it's saying that we should actually use create or replace temp view so let's actually use that function instead of using register temp table so it's going to use that function because the register temp table is eventually going to be phased out from Spark, Py, Py Spark operation and we don't want to be using it. So we're just gonna be using create or replace temp view, right? And then once we do that, what we are gonna do is uh, we can go ahead and say spark.sql and we write a SQL query. I can literally say that, um, you know, select asterisk from stock data where um, this is actually case sensitive, so I need to write lowercase, where ticker is equal to msft and uh, year is equal to 2023, right? And I can say show me five values from this and instantly it's going to go ahead and give you msft from uh, year 2023, right? So you can see that when you actually register the data frame as a temp view, you are able to go ahead and execute this operation uh, seamlessly uh, using SQL query, right? So if you don't know how to do something using Spark uh, functions, but you do know how to do the same thing using SQL query, then in that case, you could go ahead and register it as a temp view and then use SQL query to execute that function and get the results, right? 
So anyway, this is it for this tutorial. And uh, in next tutorial, we are going to be exploring window functions that, you know, um, if you uh, read advanced SQL, then you would know about window function and pretty much start calculate moving averages of stocks. So 15 day moving average, 20 day moving average and so on. So that way we have all the data that stock broker has in order to make decision uh, regarding whether or not to buy stock on a given day. Again, uh, this notebook is going to be uh, uploaded on my GitHub and I have attached the link at bottom of the tutorial. So if you want to be able to follow along, download, uh, download the notebook that I've attached in my GitHub and uh, please subscribe to my channel and give it a like uh, on the video. Thank you.